So um, I'm Karen Patani Hasen, and I am um, Director of Agency Relations for Urban Airship, and I'm joined here by Megan Barry, who is our Solutions Engineer. So what I'm going to do is give you guys an overview of Urban Airship, for those of you who aren't familiar, and then um, talk a little bit about our integration with Gimbal. Megan's going to take us through um, sort of a practical how-to session, and then I'm going to do a case study for you guys so you can see the technology in action. Oh, how can I advance this? Aha, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, as you guys already know, um, mobile is basically eating the digital world. Um, about 50% of time spent in digital is spent on mobile, and, um, excuse me, 60% um, of time in digital is spent on mobile and about 50% of that time is spent in mobile apps. So this is super timely, great opportunity for all of us to really take advantage of what we know about mobile and, and um, really optimize our learning for our consumers. And Urban Airship, this is really where we play. This is our strength. Um, we are a strategic partner to some of the biggest brands and biggest mobile applications in the world. Um, we just have a huge number of very large and well-known clients, and um, we specialize in enterprise class, scale, and capability. And um, we're basically the market leader when it comes to push technology. And um, we've been doing it for about five years, and we really know this space better than anyone. Here's a view of our audience engagement solutions. Um, REI is a great client of ours, and they use our entire suite of services. Um, this is an example of how they have used our rich pages and uh, location history to promote local events. Um, retail is a huge vertical for us. We've done a lot of work with some major clients in that area. Um, the key to mobile engagement, to successful mobile engagement, is targeting. Um, Urban Airship, our platform really allows you to target users um, m multiple user, user attributes um, to deliver value and to really contextualize your message to those users. And um, targeting really works. Targeting really boosts push response. Um, we have something called the Good Push Index where we took a survey of over 1,000 mobile applications and a variety of verticals and we found some really interesting things. Um, targeting really increases app opens by almost 300%, as you can see. Um, and using attributes like in-app behavior or, um, or purchase history can raise that number to four or five times higher response than broadcast push. And um, over a three-month period, we found that it doubles engagement with apps that target versus apps that don't. So, Location being such an important factor in targeting for mobile applications, this is why we've partnered with Gimbal. We've had some really successful deployments together with them, and it really does bring it all together for us, both um, large and small location targeting. So, Urban Airship and Gimbal, perfect match. And um, what we've been able to do with Gimbal is create um, the in-the-moment engagement engine um, so uh, our partnership with Gimbal enables us to um, sense uh, customer interests um, in spaces large and small um, and target them based on their likes and preferences and trigger marketing campaigns based on conditional logic within the application. So with that, Megan's going to tell us how it works. Thank you, Karen. Um, so next up, let's learn more about the technology and how we can leverage both Urban Airship and Gimbal together to create personalized messaging. Um, so the first step is to essentially install both Gimbal and Urban Airship SDKs into the application. Um, from there, when the, the end user downloads or updates the application on their device, 
Gimbal will then be able to start accepting events that are based on either geolocation or a beacon. Those events can then be translated into urban airship tags for use in both audience segmentation and automation. The, both the marketer and the developer can then set up messaging in urban airship through either the, the marketer-friendly user interface or through the use of our APIs that will then be able to deliver that messaging once it's triggered by the beacon. So then the end user will be able to receive the interactive message on their device, be able to interact with it, which will send feedback into urban airship so that we'll be able to better understand and learn more about the end user's preferences, really closing that feedback loop and preparing us for the next me message along the customer journey. Okay, so the next few slides, we'll actually dig into the technology and how you can set up these types of messages and beacons. Okay, so the first step within Gimbal is to define the beacon. Um, so you guys should be relatively familiar with this. Um, the, the real key part to this is naming your beacon with something that will be, with a tag that will be used in urban airship. Um, so for our purposes here, we're creating a beacon that will be placed at the entrance to a store so that we can welcome our customers to that store when they arrive. Okay, next, after we've saved that, the beacon is now online and the app is now available to start receiving those events and passing them into Gimbal and ultimately Urban Airship through the use of tags. Okay, so moving over to the Urban Airship platform, we're able to create our personalized message. So the message that we see here, and I know it's a little bit small on the presentation, um, is a welcome message to our customers who have an in-store credit. So we're able to create an interactive notification, even include something like a message center or inbox, as well as a rich landing page so that we can really interact with our customers once they get here. Okay, so next within setup, we'll, we'll use the beacon name that we had provided within Gimbal, translate that into urban airship as a tag. Uh, so within the tag selection, we'll be able to choose from a list of tags that are available that will help us to identify that beacon and thus trigger the message when someone closes in on the proximity. Um, the final step is to add any additional segmentation. So in this case, we want to make sure that we're not only sending a message to users as soon as they enter the proximity of the beacon, but that they're also qualified, meaning that they have a store credit and that they are a rewards member. So they're really one of our best customers. We want to welcome them with a very personalized one-to-one -one message. So a great way to illustrate this technology in action is with a case study. And we are lucky to have a very recent case study that we did with the U.S. Tennis Association at the U.S. Open. Um, this promotion, this collaboration really enabled us to build a great relationship with the USTA and um, this is a quote from uh, Brian Ryerson of the USTA, the messages allowed our mobile app to become a true day guide for everything, which was one of the goals that they were trying to achieve. So um, this is really interesting. 20 beacons in this huge campus and with only 20 beacons, we were really able to achieve some, some great things for the USTA. Um, USTA provided in the moment context. Um, basically, we were able to put beacons at the entry and exits, sponsor tents, box office, various tennis courts, and even the seven train to manage foot traffic to the US Open. Um, the U.S. Open, they had, uh, these were their mobile moments, the, 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 the goals that they were trying to achieve and leverage in using uh, the gimbal beacons on the urban airship platform. Um, they wanted to welcome first-time visitors, present the day's events, um, make guests aware of special promotions, and to sell last-minute tickets. Um, the welcome message um, 
very successful. Um, these are the things that they were communicating, official schedule of play, sponsored attractions, um, et cetera. And um, it was hugely successful. Over 75,000 messages sent um, in this way, averaged 7,600 page views for, per day. Something that was really exciting was that the number of page views uh, for the app were higher than the number of pushes. So what that told us was that um, people kept coming back to the application, which then evidenced the fact that they were able to make the application sort of, you know, the, the, the all-in user guide for the U.S. Open. So they were really happy with that result, and so were we. And um, featured activities. Um, this was a way to bring added value for other sponsors. So LG sponsored um, live streaming and U.S. Open radio. And... Um, you know, they basically didn't target so much because they knew that even people who were off-premise would want to receive these messages. But um, live streaming, 53% open rate. I don't know about you. I've never seen an open rate like that. So, I mean, talking huge response um, to this functionality within the application. Sponsorship monetization. Um, the USTA wanted to bring some added value to their sponsors on-premise. And so um, in this case, um, eSurance did a promotion called Trade Your Seat for a Suite. And the targeting criteria consisted of, you know, app users who were at the event, uh, beacon sighting data. There was a beacon in the eSurance tent. Um, app tag behavior, like perhaps you had gone to the ticket page but not purchased. Um, and they were really trying to limit the number of people they were sending this message to to prove the value to eSurance. And so I will tell you that this push was incredibly successful for the USTA. Insurance was thrilled. They had people sprinting to the tent to trade their seat for a suite up to 30 minutes after the push had gone out. There were people still arriving asking, is it too late? Have I, did you give it away yet? So, I mean, huge value for their sponsor. Um, sell last minute tickets. This was a really huge win for the USTA. Um, basically, they segmented the audience based on in app behavior, um, view tickets but didn't buy, um, whether or not people were in the tri state area, because they really wanted to hit people who were um, most likely to buy last minute tickets because you're close enough to actually attend, um, and, uh, and near a beacon on grounds. And in that case, uh, even with that segmentation, they were able to reach over 300,000 devices and had a 32% click-through rate. So another huge response rate um, as a result of this push. So um, bottom line, in the moment marketing, in the moment beacon capability is a game changer. Um, you're gonna be able to digitally monetize your most powerful asset, which is your digital presence, your physical presence, excuse me. Um, differentiate your experience in this way. Uh, make it easier for customers to do business with you with this technology and increase your lifetime value. So that's it. We're thrilled to be partnering with Gimbal on this and uh, we'll be in the back if you guys have any questions. Thank you very much. We actually have a, a few minutes for questions now if anybody has any. Yes. Yeah, sorry, so you're looking to understand more about the content of the message that's delivered, is that correct? Yeah, so the message itself actually comes from the, the network um, and is deployed by Urban Airship. So the beacon is what triggers it. Um, the Urban Airship and Gimbal platforms work together to then push that message to the end user through the network. Does so at this time, we really only rely on the, the network, um, but we may have developments in terms of using Wi-Fi as well that I'm unaware of. 
Um, so if you'd like to follow up later, um, I can certainly look into that more for you if you have a specific use case that would require Wi-Fi. And just to, to add on to that, we are able to pull rich media into the application through the Urban Airship platform. So like Megan said, so the, the beacon triggers the message, but we, we, can, we can do basic push, but also we can bring in um, more richer media from other parts of the web through our um, rich pages. No, we, we did not build the app. What, how, how we work with Urban Airship is we have an SDK that's installed into their app. So someone else built the app and we work with their developer and their agency to make sure that the uh, implementation is seamless and then also integrate um, with Gimbal's beacons. Well, I mean, the way that it works is we charge a licensing fee based on the size of the addressable audience. So it's, it, it's the number of active users in the app. So if it's an app that's not yet released to the wild, then, you know, obviously it will start small and sort of scale up. I think we do a count at the end of every month to determine the number of net active users in each application. And it's a licensing fee. So, I mean, it starts off as low as 400 a month and it scales up depending on um, the number of users. We have a tiered model, and then, you know, there's basic pushes priced at one level, and then location and the other features um, sort of scale up from there. I don't actually know what happens with the beacons afterwards. Um, yeah, for U.S. Open. Um, sorry, the question was, hey, for all these events, what happens to the beacon afterwards? So I was just answering, uh, it all depends on uh, who we are partnering with. If you are partnering with the venue, for example, for the US Open, if it was Arthur Ashe, hey, maybe they'll just keep the beacons there because they want to continue now experimenting or using it for other events or for next year's Open or anything like that. Or in some cases, hey, people can install them and reuse them again for any other events. So. And just to add on to that, um, Brian Ryerson from the USTA was so happy with how it all worked out that we're already talking about what we're going to do for next year. So, um, you know, part of what's exciting about um, working with Gimbal and, and our platform is that it's pretty easy to do things on the fly. And so he was just really excited about just sort of getting started with Beacons this year and the success that they had with some of the use cases and, um, and already talking about doing a, a much bigger deployment for next year. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. And and one of their goals was also to have the app sort of be very flexible and live beyond the event. So you know you if if you were a huge tennis fan and you still have that app on your phone, they're coming up with other ways to engage you through the application. Yeah, absolutely. So both Gimbal and Urban Airship offer full APIs that can be used for development purposes. So really everything that you saw within the Urban Airship user interface in terms of creating and triggering messages is available through our API as well as reporting. So you're able to not only push out messages and under, and, but also understand the results that you receive from them. Um, we have a question over here. Okay. 
So the question is around understanding segmentation, being able to leverage third-party data. Yeah, so Urban Airship currently collects data on the notifications and the interactions that occur. Um, most of our clients, however, will leverage their own existing data. So through the use of our APIs, we're able to connect to CRMs, third-party databases, et cetera, to be able to pull in user attributes and do that segmentation, not only, for example, on the server side, but also on the client side and pull all of that information into Urban Airship to make it available to the marketer. Yeah, and so the question is around understanding the differences between Urban Airship's existing location services and the addition of the Gimbal partnership. Is that correct? Okay. So the existing location services that we have within Urban Airship is really around a larger proximity. So for example, is someone in a certain neighborhood? Are they in a certain area of the city? Even in a certain state or country? So we're able to understand that location history within Urban Airship at uh, within the Urban Airship platform today, um, but with the use of Gimbal and other um, beacon providers, we're, we're able to really extend our offering to be able to trigger a message when someone, for example, walks into a store, walks into a stadium. Yeah, so they can both work at the same time together. So it's really up to the marketer and the developers to really figure out which, which type of location-based tracking they want to use. It depends on what it is that they were trying to achieve. So, you know, in the case of selling last minute tickets, they wanted to send to people who they thought were most likely to actually act on the offer. You know, if, you, if you're a US Open fan in Australia, you don't want to get that push notification offering last minute tickets because there's no way you're going to be able to take advantage of that. So it was a combination of beacon data and also um, GPS and, and geofencing for that particular message. But then, you know, for other messages that were not so location dependent, like um, letting people know that there is um, a survey or a fantasy tennis um, contest going on where you can choose who you think is going to take it. Um, they had a great response to that. Or if, um, that, you know, letting people outside of the area know that there's live streaming and uh, US Open Radio, then those were not um, geofenced messages. Hmm. That I don't know. Yeah, uh, we might have to defer to the team that actually deployed it. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to come grab a business card afterwards, we'd be happy to follow up and provide some more information on that. I, I personally was not involved in the deployment, but my understanding is that there was somebody from our team that kind of consulted with the USTA on, on, and, and with Gimbal on beacon placement and implementation. Yeah. So. Sorry, I'm going to step in and add to that. Um, the question was, hey, how did the whole thing pan out in terms of beacon deployment and what kind of site survey was done? So yeah, we work closely with Urban Airship and USTA. Brian, that's the name she mentioned, um, work with Brian to go and hey, essentially walk areas of the of the stadium to say, hey, we want beacons in this course, we want to do a social wall, or you know, all these areas they want it. And it's just essential guidance on, hey, uh, we have plenty of flexibility where you can do things on the app side. So, hey, generically, yeah, put a beacon here, you're going to get this coverage. So we give some pointers, and then 
they just had their staff go ahead and install the beacons. Um, back, back question is, is that a service Kimball provides? So we do, um, hey, one of the cases, we do absolutely offer um, our, you know, our professional services on, hey, if you have a large venue, you want to do beacons in, um, we'll make sure, you know, we'll offer our professional services, or at least, hey, maybe we'll be able to point uh, you in the direction of, hey, these are the third parties we work with, who we are also, you know, they are where Kimball beacons work, so. And again, as I said, the goal is to keep the beacon installed as simple as possible. Do all the uh, intelligence in that. That's how you want. That's how you can scale. So. Thank you very much.